Hey, what's going on, y'all? So uh, a couple of days ago, actually, it, maybe it was like a week ago. I don't actually remember. Uh, there was someone on my YouTube page, and they were trying to explain to me that R. Kelly was going to have an anonymous jury. And I, I, I couldn't understand what they were saying initially. And I think the person's name or initials are DJC. And for whatever reason, what the, what they were trying to say to me, I wasn't, it wasn't coming through clear. I couldn't understand what they were saying. I think they, they actually started off with a question. And I believe that question was, will the jurors know the name of the victims or the name of the alleged victims in the R. Kelly case? And right off the bat, I think I answered and gave him a, a different answer than what what he was looking for. He was asking one question and I answered a totally different question. And he came back and then he clear, he gave some clarification and then I still yet gave him a completely different answer. So eventually what ends up happening is that I was browsing Twitter and when I, as I'm browsing Twitter, and I think this was around the 1st or the 31st, the 31st of last month or the 1st or 2nd of this month. And as I'm browsing Twitter, I think there's this one journalist I follow and he posted a link of this particular court order, which essentially says that R. Kelly is going to have an anonymous and sequestered jury. So then it all clicked. It all clicked at that moment what DJC was actually trying to ask or what he was trying to say and i never got a chance to respond to djc and i wanted to actually make this video to give a response to djc and to let him know what i think and i actually think that the the jury trial is not going to be a big deal the and, and let's not take that out of context i mean of course, the case is a big deal. This is a really crazy case. I've never seen any case like this before in my life. And this case is crazy. But in the grand scheme of things, the anonymous and sequestered jury may not be a big deal. You let me know. I mean, leave your, your questions and comments below and let me know what you think about the anonymous and sequestered jury. But I'm going to break it down and I'm going to explain why I believe this is not a big deal. Now, in order for you to really get what I'm saying and, and kind of follow along with this particular video, you kind of have to go back and you have to watch two separate videos that I've done. So I have a video that just basically talks about the American jury system. And in that video series, I go through the process of how a jury is selected. And then I go through the process of talking about potential dangers in the selection of the jury process. And I talk about a lot of things in that video. And there's another thing towards the end where I talk about voir dire, what that is. And then I also talk about the preemptory strikes. So it's going to be really important that you watch that video because it's a primer for this video. I'm not going to regurgitate all that stuff that I went over in the first video. Then there's also another video that I've done as it pertains to the jury and as it pertains to R. Kelly's case, right? You know, so those two video series, they're actually two separate video series were separate, but they're meant for each other, right? You know, so the story behind it is that someone came out, they were like, you know, can you explain how the jury process is going to work for R. Kelly? And I started to make that series, but as I started to make the series, I realized I didn't know anything about the jury selection process. So I ended up making the video that explains the jury process right you know so it goes into the history of the jury and it tells you how the jury works so on and so forth so the r kelly video series is a spinoff 
of, of the jury selection series, and it goes into details of how the jury selection process is going to impact R. Kelly. Most important, there's a video clip in that series where they bring in this lawyer and then the lawyer explains to you how to select a jury. And that video is, is going to also be key and it's going to shed a lot of light on why I believe that the anonymous jury is not going to make that big of a difference. And let me just go ahead and give you a little hint. The reason the anonymous jury is not going to make that much of a difference is because the jury selection process to begin with is not what you think it is. Most people think that the jury is this noble and respected thing. It's, it's just a crap crapshoot, right? But to understand that you have to go back and you have to watch those two different series to understand why the jury selection process, and I kind of want to say BS, you know, the, the jury selection process and the jury itself, it's not what you think it is, people. I want to say fam. I mean, a lot of people are saying fam now. I don't even know where it came from and why people are saying it. I need somebody to break down and explain to me why, where, why people are saying fam, because I, I can't make that word roll off the tongue of my mouth and say fam, you know. You know, so I'm just going to say people, but I, I really want to say fam. But anyway, getting back to this. So the jury selection process is not, and the jury itself is not what you guys think it is. I promise you, it's all BS. And that's my personal opinion of the jury system. And it's not that I disrespect the jury system. It's not that I think that um, there's something out there better. I don't. I, at, right now, I can't think of anything better than what we have. I'm just saying what we have now is B, is BS. And to understand it, you have to go back and watch those two series. I'm not going to regurgitate all that stuff, uh, you know, that I covered in the first two videos. But I'm essentially just saying. You're getting a bunch of strangers and then you're getting them into court to hear your story and you don't know anything about these people and, you know, these people are going to judge your faith. And these people are people. They're people just like you and me and they can be biased, they can be racist and they can be hateful, they can be evil. I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard to get a noble jury who's actually going to be fair and honest, right? Everybody has their own individual biases. But anyway, so let me just go ahead and get into this video and just cover some, some of the basics in the jury uh, order here. So, of course, this is in the Eastern District of New York, United States versus Robert Sylvester Kelly. And this order is coming from Ann Donnelly. And let me just go ahead and read verbatim. I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to try to read some of the parts that are important, at least important for this video. And this order goes on to say, before the court is the government's motion for an anonymous and partially sequestered jury. For the reasons that follow, the government's motion is granted. The government requests that the identities of all prospective jurors, including their names, addresses, places of employment not be revealed to either party or their attorneys and that from the time each jury is in panel until the conclusion of the trial the jurors eat lunch together and be accompanied in and out of the courthouse by members of the united states marshal service each day these measures are necessary the government argues because the trial is expected to garner overwhelming media attention the defendant has both the incentive and grant and, and the means to interfere with the jury through bribery or intimidation. The defendant and his associates have attempted to obstruct justice in the past, and the jury will likely proceed 
the defendant as dangerous based on the evidence presented in trial. The defendant responds that the facts of this case do not warrant impaneling an anonymous jury and asserts the government has offered no evidence that the jurors are at any risk from his or her associates. Moreover, he argues that withholding the jurors' names, address, and employers limits his ability to conduct a fair and meaningful voir dire. So let's stop right here. So right off the bat, you are giving the definition of what an anonymous and sequestered jury is. At least that's my perception. So the anonymous jury is simply a jury where the identities of all the prospective jurors, including their names, addresses, and places of employment are not revealed. So again, so this is where the first video series that I've done is gonna come into play. You have to understand what the jury selection process is. You, if you haven't seen that video series, go back and watch it. Uh, if you already understand the process of selecting the jury, then you should be good. So let's just talk about this. So the only thing in my mind where the names, the identities of the jurors, their names, their addresses, and places of employment is going to make a difference is if you were wanting to do some homework in advance, right? So you're going to, you get the names and addresses of all the jurors, potential jurors, not the actual jurors. That's the other thing. So you have this list of names and address of all the potential jurors ahead of time. And now you can go off and do some research on all these people. And now that you do this research, you, you can do this research based on the fact that you know where they live. Does this person live in the hood? Does this person live in a upscale neighborhood? Does his does he have a mortgage where his mortgage is over uh, $2 million? You, you can begin to draw some basic assumptions about that person. And you also have their place of employment. Does this person work at McDonald's or does this person work in corporate America? Is this person a doctor? Is this person himself a lawyer, right? So all this information is important because it's gonna allow you to do research on that potential juror. Now, here's a, here's a problem with that though. You're going to have names and addresses of over a hundred people. It's going to be almost impossible for you to do research on all those people unless you have a staff of probably about, I'd say, or unless you hire a firm. It's if, if you hire a firm or you have a staff that can, a staff of maybe about 70 people to go comb through this list, sort the list out, and divvy up the people and assign you know, the jurors to the staff so that each staff member can do detailed research on each juror, right? And again, this is not an exact science, and you would know that if you watch the, the, the second video series, which is Taylor Tar Kelly. Well, if you watch both of them, you'll know that the jury selection process is not an exact science. It's a coin flip. So you're doing this research and you're drawing these conclusions, assumptions, not conclusions. I'm sorry. You're drawing these assumptions, right? And you know what they say about assumptions, right? When you assume you make an ass out of you and me. So you're doing this research so that you can make these assumptions about these potential jurors. And if you don't have maybe a staff of 70, of 70 people or more, or at least a staff large enough to accommodate, you know, the amount of jurors that you're going to have, you're not going to be able to do thorough research on these people. Um, and, you know, thorough, thorough research is going to mean different things to different people. But long story dull, you're looking at the name, you're looking at the address, you're looking at the place of employment. 
you're going to probably scrape the person's social media profile. I mean, the depth that this research can go is really going to be dependent upon how much time you have and how much money you're willing to pay for somebody to sit down and go through all this stuff. And then at the end of all of that, they're going to have to come up with probably four or five different catchwords to describe this person or maybe a very short sentence to describe this person because when this person is up on the stand in voir dire you're going to want to be able to quickly look at your notes and you're going to want to be able to quickly uh, think about some of the questions that you're going to ask this person or maybe the questions can be written out in advance on this particular person right but what I'm trying to say is, is that trying to do research on jurors ahead of time is a tremendous amount of work. And I would bet that most lawyers probably wouldn't do this type of work. Most lawyers are probably going to use their gut when it comes down to picking the jurors. They're probably going to look at them and, and, and again, so you, and this is the part where you have to go back and watch that video series because there's a lawyer, an experienced lawyer who comes in and he basically tells other prosecutors how to avoid black people, which is, you know, racist in and of itself. But, you know, he's being honest. This is what, this is what they do. This is what they do when they go to court. And this is another reason I say that the system that we have is for the most part, you know, bullshit <clears throat> for the most part is bullshit so you're not going to do uh, in-depth research on you know 100 or 200 jurors hell it could be even 500 jurors you're not going to do in-depth research on all these people you yourself as a lawyer you're going to look at that person you're going to look how they dress you're going to determine you're going to make basic assumptions of that person. You're going to size them up and you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to basically read them and you could be wrong and you could be right, but you're going to go with your gut. So the names and the addresses of the jurors won't matter, in my, in my opinion. If you disagree, leave your questions and comments below. And when, when you disagree with me, let me know exactly why you disagree and explain to me why the names and addresses of these potential jurors matter. Now, if you're going to argue that R. Kelly, if, if you're going to argue that his lawyers are going to do the de detailed research and they, they probably have a system whereby they can weed out people based on, you know, the research that they do. Okay. You know, I'll go with that. Right. You know, but that's going to cost a tremendous amount of money and you need a huge staff to do something like that. If you're a lawyer yourself and you know why the names and address of this, of, of the potential jurors matter, leave your comments below. But me personally, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters because you're, you're really just going to look at the person and based off of what you think of that person, you're going to come up with questions to ask. You probably already have questions in your mind uh, laid out for asking certain character types. And, and you're going to you're going to make your decisions based off of that. You know, so I, I don't think the names and address matter. Again, if you think it matters, questions, comments below and explain to me why it matters. Then the other part, the sequestered juror. We know what these sequestered jurors look like because it basically tells us that from the time each jury is in panel until the conclusion of the trial, the jurors eat lunch together and be accompanied in and out of the courthouse by members of the United States Marshal Service. Now, this may also include putting the jurors up into a hotel and guarding the jurors to make sure that they don't have any contact with any outside uh, resources. Resources, what am I thinking? To make sure that they don't have any contact with uh, any outsiders, right? You know, they're just basically going to communicate amongst themselves. Uh, there'd probably be U.S. Marshals guarding them in a hotel. The U.S. Marshals probably would probably make sure that they don't have TVs 
in, in their rooms. They're probably going to take away their cell phones. These are the type of things that I would imagine goes into a sequestered jury process. Now, the reason this doesn't matter to me is because I think it's going to be almost impossible for you to find somebody who doesn't already know about the R. Kelly case. It's going to be impossible. It's going to be almost impossible for you to find somebody who doesn't know who R. Kelly is, right? That's why they're spamming all this stuff in the media back to back, and they're trying to drag R. Kelly's name through the mud, and they're constantly putting negative information out there about R. Kelly. That's why I don't think this sequestered jury is going to make any difference. They Now, the prosecutors are arguing that, you know, R. Kelly could try to intimidate or bribe these the jurors. I don't believe that. You know, I, I honestly don't believe that, right? But I also believe that a sequestered jury won't make a difference. Again, if you think the sequestered jury per portion of this order uh, will make a difference, questions and comments below explain exactly why you believe the sequestered jury is going to make a difference because clearly me myself i don't think it's going to make a difference because everybody out and a mama already knows about r kelly they know who he is they know what he's being accused of they've seen the negative information dragged through the media and you know the only caveat is that some some of these people may not be paying attention you know, there, there are likely people out there who know who R. Kelly is, but they're, they're not paying attention to the specific details. But in my opinion, they probably already formed an opinion in their mind. And they, it, they actually have a duty to be fair and impartial, right? You know, so again, that's something else that comes out of that video series, right? But for the most part, the sequestered jury is not going to matter. It's not going to matter at all one bit. I'm interested to see uh, what you think, whether or not you think I missed something. Questions and comments below. So let's move on. So now the other reason that this isn't going to make any difference is because there's essentially two phases of the jury selection process. And maybe it's one phase. I, I can't uh, remember exactly how it goes, but basically this is thing called voir dire, which is French, by the way, right? You know, je vois, I see, je dire, I say, right? You know, so C and say, there's a C and say portion of the jury selection process. And what happens in this selection process is that you get to see the jurors and you get to hear them speak. Right. You get the you. It's it's a it's a session whereby you look at the jurors, you get a chance to size them up and then you ask questions and then you try to eliminate the jurors uh, on some legal premise based on how they answer the questions. Right. So but before we get into that, you get every every person gets. The prosecutor and the defendants, they get what's called three peremptory strikes. And essentially, you can strike three people from the jury pool without any reason. You know, maybe I should have covered this first. So, well, actually, all of this is covered in the first video series. So I'm not even going to go into all this stuff, right? You know, you need to go back and watch the two video series I mentioned. I'm going to post them at the end of this video, and it's going to explain how the voir dire session works and how the peremptory strike works, right? So, you know, that's essentially it. The voir dire is not going to matter. The, it's not, well, the, the anonymous jury and the sequestered jury, those two components of this order, it's not going to matter because, again, the voir dire is, is, is all about, in the preemptory strikes, it's all about seeing the actual jurors, sizing the jurors up, 
and asking questions based on, you know, how you size them up and basically trying to get them eliminated from the jury pool. And then, you know, the peremptory strike, you know, essentially, you know, you get to get rid of, uh, you know, several jurors, right? So that's it. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. The only way that the names and the addresses of the individuals are going to matter is if the jury was improperly selected. So if you look at the federal statute, which I haven't looked at, the statute I looked at for jury selection was Illinois. But if you look at the, and again, you know, all the state statutes are pretty much modeled after the federal statutes. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some huge variance between Illinois and the federal statutes. But the only way the names and addresses are going to matter based off of the, the research that I did is if the jury was improperly selected. So I guess I could say that the names and address could matter beforehand if, for example, they tried to, and actually, hold on a second. So uh, this is where it would matter. So I'm going to contradict myself. So for example, let's say, let's say we know for a fact that white conservatives, we'll say millennials, we want, I don't want to make this a racial thing. Let's say we know for a fact that millennials are 90% likely to convict R. Kelly. We don't know that for a fact, right? I'm just making this stuff up, up as I go along, as, as I go along. But uh, let's just let's just put a hypothetical out there, and that hypothetical is that millennials are 100% against R. Kelly, and they're you know 100% likely to convict R. Kelly. So what if they use the jury selection process? to overwhelm the jury pool with millennials, right? I don't know how they would do this, but if they've done something like this, then the names, the addresses, uh, the employment information could be used to, to put a stop to the jury selection process or to retake the jury uh, selection process. So, you know, I would imagine if, if, the defense probably noticed that, hey, you know, these guys are selecting millennials and they're basically trying to, you know, get a conviction by selecting people who are more likely to convict R. Kelly. Then I, I would imagine a motion could be filed by the defense to say, hey, no, you, you, we have to stop this nonsense, right? But on the same token, that if you discovered that they've done this after the fact, then of course, you can include this into your motion to vacate the judgment or motion for a new trial, so on and so forth. You can, you know, argue that the jury was improperly selected, right? You know, so you can try to get that verdict thrown out, right? You know, now, of course, doing it after the fact is not going to be as good as catching this in the, in, uh, you know, in the very beginning and nipping it in the butt, right? You know, so... That's one scenario where the names and addresses will matter. But aside from that, aside from that, the names and address and identities of these people won't matter. It won't matter one bit. The sequestered jury portion of this order definitely won't matter. You know, you know, why would you care if the jurors are locked up in a hotel room and, you know, they have to eat lunch together and they can't talk to their families. Why would you care? You, you wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily care. You just want them to get the job done. So the sequestered jury portion definitely doesn't matter. And then the anonymous part only matters, in my opinion, if you're trying to prevent the a selection of uh, jurors that's going to vote against R. Kelly. But you have to also realize that the prosecutors won't know the names and addresses of the jurors as well. You know, so that's it for this video. And, you know, so just to sum it all up, you know, it won't matter. It won't make any difference, right? You know, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. Now, again, we have to put that in context. And the context, in my opinion, 
is that the jury selection process and the, the jury hearing your case is all bullshit. You know, it's it's all, I won't say bullshit. You know, let me take that back. It's it's a roll of the dice. It's not an exact science. They can, uh, there's so many things that can go wrong in, in the jury selection process. And there's so many things that can go wrong when uh, the jury actually hears a case. But to understand it, you got to go back and you got to watch the two videos. So that's it for this video. Leave your questions and comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe.